Hi guys, welcome to this video looking at the uses of the noble gases. You might think because the noble gases do not react, they're inert, they're not useful. However, that inert property can actually be really useful. So we're going to have a look at a couple of uses where that inert property is useful. So if we start off with argon, which is used in filament light bulbs, you can see here this is where the filament is. And if you were to just use air and put air into the bulb, which has oxygen in it, the oxygen would react with the filament. And if it reacts with it, it oxidizes and it stops the actual bulb from working. So instead, we use argon. Now, because argon is inert and reactive, it does not react with the filament. If it doesn't react with the filament, it won't oxidize and therefore it won't break. Some of the other noble gases have exactly the same properties. So for example, krypton, xenon and argon are also used in flash photography. And the explanation is exactly the same. It stops anything from reacting with the filament. If we move on to another example, so this time we're going to have a look at both argon and helium, and they're used in welding. So if I take two metals and heat them together to try and join them, if there is oxygen present when you react the two metals together, it causes oxidation again. If it oxidizes the metal, there will be impurities and it makes the joint weaker. Therefore, it's going to break more easily, which you don't want when you're welding metals together. So if you replace that oxygen with argon or helium, it gives it an inert atmosphere, which means there are no reactions, no impurities, and it gives you a stronger joint. And all that down to it's having a full outer shell. On to the next example then, we're going to use helium again. You should all know that helium is used in balloons. Now there are two different gases that you can use in balloons, which are helium and hydrogen, both of which are less dense than air. However, Hydrogen is highly flammable. If you were to put a spark there, it would set on fire, it would explode. Helium, on the other hand, is inert. If it's inert, it will not react, it will not explode if there is a flame next to it, which makes it a lot safer. And that's really all there is to it. So let's see what the examiners can ask you on this. So let's start off with question one. Explain why helium is used in blimps instead of hydrogen. And number two, explain why argon is used in light bulbs and welding. Three marks and four marks for both. Pause the video, have a go, think through what we've talked about today, and we'll see how you've done in a minute. Right, let's go through and see how you've done. So if we start off with helium, why it's used in blimps instead of hydrogen, the first thing, talk about the property that's useful for both of them, which is the fact that they are less dense than air. The second thing is talk about what is different between helium and hydrogen. Helium's a noble gas, it's unreactive, it's inert, it has a full outer shell. I'd be putting all of those in. In this case, I've given you one mark for just saying one of them. And then finally, therefore, it will not set on fire or explode. So that's how you get your three marks there. Question two will take a very, very similar answer. So we start off with saying argon is unreactive, inert, a noble gas in group zero, group eight. Anything like that will get you the first mark. Second mark saying it does not react with the filament or it prevents oxygen reacting with the hot filament. Your third mark is for saying oxygen would oxidize the hot filament metal. And then finally, oxygen would cause impurities in the welded metal. So any of those four would have got you the marks. Let's have a look at the review question, which is describe uses for helium, argon and krypton and explain why they are used in this way. That brings this video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can have a look at my latest video up there. You can also have a look at my website if you haven't seen it before, and you can click on subscribe down below. Bye now.